Good morning. Well, here I am again on a Wednesday morning and uh, trying to figure out how to put a video up on my our First Lutheran Church of the Reformation. Thought I had it, didn't have it. So I thought I'd at least make a video and then uh, if it happens that it goes out to all my Facebook friends, well, I guess I'm just going to have to deal with that. In fact, as you might know, last week um, I did it this way and I ended up getting all kinds of different comments from people and they were almost all, I think, in fact, they, in fact, they, they were all good comments. Very, very thankful for your thoughts. I know, you know, this voice of mine given by God is just something I breathe in and let it go out. And and yet people, many people, the churches I served and friends I've had, you know, are used to listening to me talk. And so I guess in some cases, this is a good thing. Uh, but I want to, this is the last one I'm going to do during the Lenten season. And it's really been a hard one uh, to think about because as we have lifted up, the church is not the church of the past anymore. Um, a lot of congregations have closed and and a lot of pastors are not taking up the call uh, or struggling to figure out how to go forward. And people in the pews are, are wondering and uh, they're hanging in there, and uh, many of them love their church with all their heart, and and especially the memories that it brings when they look around, and the people that they remember sitting next to, and all that stuff. Now, we can get real depressed about that, I suppose, you know. Um, it's often been said, church history-wise, that these times come and go within uh, the church and in culture, and uh, it is always for us, especially as we come through the Lenten season and soon into Holy Week, to remember that there is joy in the morning. At the resurrection of Jesus, the one who came, promised by God, into the world, the one who shared the good news with God's people, the one who then was rejected by those who were feeling uh, threatened by him and crucified on a very uh, painful cross and then three days later rose from the dead. Praise Jesus. Now that's uh, supposed to be more than just uh, the important account of our Lord's life and, and what happened and, and to be an account of, of what we all are a part of. We're all part of the body of Christ, those of us baptized in his name. And even if you're not, I mean, God loves you. But um, that there is always this hope. And so, and so we are to hold on to this hope. Now, I had a great time last Sunday here at the First Lutheran Church of the Reformation because we received six new men, men, six men, into the membership of the church. And they uh, had a lot of different backgrounds coming into it. Uh, four out of the six really have come out of our work in the neighborhood in terms of pasta supper and all the rest. Some who have been volunteering to work in it, some who have received its benefit in terms of food and community. And they made it upstairs and they wanted to commit to this particular ministry, this parish known as First Lutheran Church of the Reformation. And it was great because it's that reminder, you know, people need the gospel. People need the good news. And the institution is a source of that. Well, I uh, also know that in the midst of not only this stuff about the church, I mean, the world is so messed up. I mean, I mean, I brothers and sisters, another shooting in Nashville in a Presbyterian school for kids. 
three nine-year-olds and then major staff people. I, I, I just don't know. You know, and the real problem, I believe, is that it, it seems to always get political. It always seems to have people taking sides. And that, uh, I believe, is one of our problems, obviously. I'm not really being that in-depth here. In fact, it goes into this human spirit of ours that wants to be in charge, that wants to make our own rules and what we want to do and don't tell us not to because we'll do it anyway. It's this innate thing that we all have. For me, it always goes back to uh, when I got away from uh, home for the first time and went off to college and freedom, freedom, freedom uh, that that was. I very shortly into that experience met these guys that were members of this local fraternity. It was called Beta Phi Epsilon. You've heard of them, I'm sure also nicknamed The Squires. It was a good nickname. And uh, they were uh, very friendly to me and, uh, and stuff and, and brought me out to get to know the group better. They, in those days, we just had a floor. There was no house or anything. And so uh, I joined and I was so happy to be a part of the, of the cool kids. I think of that, of course, because um, when I have trouble sleeping, which often is the case, and I'm lying in bed and I'm trying to think about some stuff, sometimes I, I work on sermons at that time, you know, so blame that on, on whatever you see. But uh, this one particular time, recently, uh, out of the blue, I started to think about all the old songs from the Squires. And I'm not going to sing them because some of them aren't really appropriate, but but all of them had the same theme. And that is, we're the greatest. We're better than you. We are the squires. Rah, rah, rah. And I want to really lift up that one of the problems with uh, our own personalities and our own stuff is this desire to be to be on the good team, the good team, the good team. Now, maybe we can also add to that that a good team that does good work, you know, and okay, fine. But still, we want to be on the team. And we don't think that some people belong on the team. Now, at the end of this little time together, I... Uh, I want to bring up an old phrase that has really helped me in my spiritual life. And that is, you've heard this phrase before, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Now, every once in a while when I get out of whack and when I wonder what to say, what to do, how to help, when I look at the problems that surround us and, and try to look for answers, I try to remember, what would Jesus do? His spirit is present with me, and he speaks to me. He certainly spoke to the time when he was walking this earth, and clearly the message all the time was, we're all God's people. We're all in need of support and love to each other. We are all called to be a part of the body of Christ. We, Jesus would not take up a gun. Jesus would not allow a young person to be adrift, not knowing what direction to go. Jesus would, would be very much against an invasion of a, of a country just because the other country wants it. Jesus would um, know and help us to know that the resources that we have been given, and we've been given different amounts of resources in our life, 
that the reason we have these resources is to give them away to make a difference in the lives of other people. That's what Jesus would do. What Jesus would also do would be to, uh, to remind us that um, there's a lot of work to be done. And yet it is clear um, that uh, we are to stand with those who feel marginalized. We are to stand with those who have different sexual preferences than us. We are to stand with those who don't look like us. We're to stand with those who don't have the resources we do. We are to stand with those who really need to be loved. That's what Jesus would do. You know, I, uh, I look with hope upon the future of our church, uh, mostly because uh, Jesus is with us and Jesus will resurrect us. Jesus will. And even if all things fall down, we're down on our face and we don't know which direction to go. And our life as we know it ends, Jesus is there to lift us up because that's what Jesus does. Again, I'm kind of rambling. I, I kind of, like I've told you before, I, I don't mind this time because I can just like sit and talk and uh, I have some notes, but I, I stray from them all the time. And uh, just to, to let you know, first of all, of my love for you, uh, that in particular, there are many of you who I've really shared a great deal through the years. And it's been so meaningful to me. Um, I always wondered, as I have shared before, whether this was a call that I should have followed when I was a young man. Lord, Lord has made me know that it has been a wonderful choice to follow the Spirit into the lives of people that really uh, both need God's love and are willing to share God's love with others. As we get ready for Lent and the uh, Holy Week and, and then uh, the resurrection, as always, this is part promotional in a sense. I, you know, I'd love you to be able to, to come to any worship place of your choice, you know, to hear the good news of Easter. It's, it's, uh, it's good stuff because it's, it puts away the blues. It brings out the hope. And may you have a uh, blessed Easter, a uh, family-filled Easter, if at all possible. Sometimes it isn't, but there are people around that will love you anyway. And may we uh, go day by day in his name. Amen.